Okay. So I, like I said, I'm going to do something different. I'm going to be working flat first, which I never do for anything. Um, and we're going to start with a nice little drawing. It's not going to be so if you took the portrait class, we did a full on charcoal rendering first, and then we took it to the UART paper and we did a grid and we did a line drawing and then we just started painting. So today, um, obviously we're not gonna be doing a full on drawing first. I don't really know that that's necessary when it comes to animals. It's certainly a good practice. So if you ever wanna do the same kind of thing before you do a commissioned pet portrait, um, that's certainly fine. Let me spotlight here. So today we have Oreo. This is my friend's cat, Oreo, who passed away, I think within the last year, but she's having a rough time. So I just want to do something nice for her and we'll do a full on portrait of Oreo. Um, so the fundamentals that we did with the white fur into the black, that'll call come into play again today. The same coloring things are happening. We have some nice blues and um, some shadowy colors that have kind of a reflection from the hardwood floors. Like you can see a little bit of that orangey yellow kind of colors in there. So um, we'll be working with those colors too. So I have this gridded out to one inches and then you can see my numbering. I have the, I number my blocks. So one through seven up and down. And I started in the one corner. That isn't always important, but sometimes it's super important to know where you started your measuring from uh, so you can match it on your paper. In terms of size, I did one and a half again, which is what I did for the portrait class. So it'll be just slightly larger than the photograph and I have my blocks numbered as well. Um, so this is nine by 12, this is seven by seven. The cropping is a little bit different. I'm gonna have some extra space on the side, um, which I think is gonna be nice for compositional purposes. All right, I'm gonna switch cameras. So give it a second here. There's gonna be some adjusting for just a second and pray to God that my uh, tripod holds the camera as it's tilted down. <laughs> I use it to be or not to be. To be or not to be. Oh, wait. So I'm sideways. Hold on. So this is a ruler. You might not be able to do this now that I think about it because it's reversing things. I'll be drawing upside down for you unless it's right in front of me. Oh, it did. It's. All right, it's reversed. All right, I'm gonna pause the recording because nobody needs to see this for any length of time. Okay, I guess I need to find my eraser. I'm sure I'll be erasing a little bit. All right, I'm using a 7H pencil. Wow, that's hard. <laughs> but, that's what I use to make these lines. So that's the thing with the, the sanded paper. It really makes Big everything shoppers. that much darker. So um, it just grabs a hold of the graphite. You don't really need anything soft. So. <laughs> Somehow or other, my lines are in square. Well, it doesn't matter. Just do your number. Make sure you figure out where your border is. Oh, I wonder how okay. I did that. So I've got one through seven across the bottom. So I have an eighth square. So I know I'm gonna be a little bit extra here. So I can actually just go ahead for the sake of my own vision. I'm just gonna get rid of those last couple of lines now. Get them out of my visual space here. She said don't use needed eraser last week on Sandy Paper. Yeah, the needed eraser doesn't work on the sanded paper. Okay. 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 This is vinyl. I think this is correct. I can't really use this for drawing anymore. 
All right. <laughs> I got too many things in my hand today. I'm a little like disoriented for some reason. All right. So my sixth line, I have to ignore the top of the photograph because my sixth block is at the very top of the page. So I'm going right up to the top here and right to the edge over here. So let's see. I'm going to start with his back. That. Notice I didn't bother with any kind of pause or anything like that today. We're not going to work with their pause or anything like that just yet. Um, where the fur kind of comes out. So that's another thing, you know, when we're drawing the line drawings, a lot of times you can see the fur is kind of sticking out past where a line would be. So you have to make your own decision. Are you including the fur that kind of is just hanging over the edge in your initial line drawing? Or are you going with what you think is like the actual ear here? Um, there's no right or wrong answer. You just have to remember which one you chose <laughs> so you can have an accurate drawing. When you're doing people portraits, do you typically grid them? Um, again, it only depends on the time frame. Okay. Um, if I have the time, if they give me enough time, I'll do what I did in our portrait class, which was a full on charcoal sketch rendering, work out my issues. And then um, I would actually just set into drawing. Uh, without a grid but then if I run into trouble like this the last pass pet portrait I did I was just struggling I ended up doing two different versions of it um, and then the second version I ended up gridding I don't I hardly ever grid a pet um, but I ended up having to grid him out and uh, do what I'm going to do today so some of this drawing gets a little goofy because the shadows make their own little shapes. And that's part of why we're gonna do the next part of what we're doing today. I always find it funny because um, pet portraits in particular, they look funny in the line drawing version. Like everything looks wrong to me in the line drawing version because the way, the way their fur is shaped and shadowed and colored, that's what makes the, the features the best. But when you just have their eyes set in a funny spot, you think it doesn't look right. So you're like, okay, well, I'll just keep going and hope for the best. So I'm just kind of blocking in that bit of black fur. Walk in where this black fur lives. <laughs> All right, so now his mouth is at a lovely little cross section here. So that's kind of nice. Let's get that in there. Oh, wow. Hold on, I got to look at that again. I have it. When I'm drawing freehand, I draw really big, too big, and I have to correct it because it's too big. When I'm drawing in the grid, I always draw too small. <laughs> so I have to look at where everything meets up with my little guidelines here. So the tip there. I'm going to check the angles. It's a perfect little V shape. He's almost straight on. So that's kind of nice too. There's no wonky angles happening. So 
Tuesday night, I did um, a demonstration via Zoom for the Parkland Art League. They're out of Allentown and a uh, very nice group of people, but it was really weird. There was no, they were so silent. <laughs> <laughs> I was starting was, to get a little it was weird uh, right <laughs> it was so weird I'm used to you guys how everybody has you know we talk we chat whether it's about what we're working on or what we're battling with in our drawings or our paintings and you know we're just kind of there are moments of silence but for the most part we have a little bit of communication a little rapport <laughs> I'm like, I think these people hate me. I'm not sure they like anything that I'm doing. When I got offline, I was like, Brett was like, how's it go? I was like, I don't know. I think it's terrible. <laughs> I guess sometimes they me you nice have to note. tell people that um, you're, you're allowed to talk, ask questions, please. <laughs> yeah, I did. You know, and it's funny because some people are really particular. They don't want to be talked to while they work. Um, and then... There are some, you know, art groups that they don't want their members to talk and interrupt. They want one person to be like a moderator, mm. um, which is fine too. I mean, it works for your group, but, um, and I said, I was like, I don't mind being interrupted. <laughs> Please <laughs> do chime in. <laughs> but they sent me a really nice note the next morning and I felt much better. <laughs> So these little chunky, this is, again, this is where I feel like the line drawings always kind of goof me up because mm. it looks silly to me right now. But those are the lines that I kind of see. Um, I'm gonna do some quick checking with my angles. So I'm gonna go the angle of his corner of his eye down to the corner of his mouth. So those match up. So that point to that point matches up. And it should, because I gridded. But if I didn't grid, I, this is one of the things that I would do. Check points. So I've got the corner of his mouth to the corner of his eye. It's almost a perfect V. <laughs> it really is. It really is. All right, I think this eye might be out too far. No? All right, so and again, the cat's eyes look a little silly being so giant in their shape with no shadowing right now. So, all right. So then I've got a nice big shadow shape through here. That's a little bit of white, a little black. All right, so there's my line drawing. I really didn't need the grid for this in all honesty. Um, a cat's face is a little bit, in my opinion, it can be simpler to get that line drawing in there because, you know, when dogs, a lot of times they have their big long snouts and you've got some foreshortening to deal with and all that kind of stuff. And the, and the cats are a little more compact. So I'm going to go ahead and erase my grid lines now. And then the next step is a little different than I've ever done in class. Um, I ended up, like I said, that last pet portrait commission that I did at Christmas time, I was, um, so I, I took a little time off of teaching from the beginning of November through the holidays. I, you know, I typically don't do classes in December anyway, because they don't usually people get busy and they don't come to class. So um, I usually don't teach in December anyway, but I went back home to Cincinnati and then, uh, then Thanksgiving and getting all that stuff together. So I wasn't really painting either. And then I had this commission. So I'm jumping back in after a couple of weeks of off of no painting. And I jump into a commission pet portrait, probably not hmm. the best thing to start with. <laughs> and, uh, so like I said, I ended up gridding. I did one, I'd done pet portraits for them before. So they liked a certain thing that I did for a different pet. So I was trying to kind of do that again. And 
and it it just looked weird. They also sent me really weird photographs, which we kind of talked about last week. They sent me one photograph, the dog looked like he was primarily golden. Another one, he looked like he was kind of white. Um, so the coloring was so different. You just really weren't sure <laughs> which way to go. I'm like, uh, Mine looks Chinese. So I ended up, I gridded and then <clears throat> I hold on. We'll get to that in just a second, and then I'll tell you what I did next. Trying not to erase the lines that I actually drew. It's fine. There's just too many grid lines. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I would like you know, to just grid right in the center what I need. You know exactly. And I've done that before too, where I know I'm only worried about the face, and I'll just set up a grid in the middle where I think it's going to be and just do the face. All right, so using my paintbrush to wipe away, I lightened up the lines a little bit that we had. So now what I'm going to do is I can take a softer pencil. I'm going to take an HB and I'm going to start to block in some of the shadow shapes and some of the features that I want to find a little bit better and stuck in place because once we start painting, and you get the fur going, you can kind of lose your way a little bit. <laughs> Already did. So I'm almost just going to treat it like a pencil drawing for a minute. I'm not pushing hard because I don't want too much dark. I mean, there's a lot of white fur. But there's some shadowing around his mouth. I can kind of start to set some of these whisker lines. And there's little shadow shapes where the whiskers come out. Ready? And I can see that this eye is in complete shadow. So I can give it a little more information now. That whole side of his face is so interesting. When you squint, it's like all straight lines there, right down. Yeah. The side. Yeah. Yeah. Watch. Well, the thing lifted. What lifted? He's got that nice, sharp black outline, like he's wearing eyeliner <laughs> with his eyes here. And this will spread a little bit. So we're gonna use um, the rubbing alcohol. to kind of set this for us. Um, I know he does have a lot of black, so I'm not gonna go completely crazy. So I'm not, I'm not gonna do all of his body where the black is in black, just because that's kind of easy enough to do with um, the pastel. But where we have some shadowing, I can just kind of start to set it in place. This method works really well, in particular when you have a cat that ha a cat or a dog that has a lot of unique striping, um, not just shadow and light, but when you need to set in place 
where they have all their little stripes going in all kinds of directions. Um, that's where the grid would have come in handy to keep the grid going to get those stripes in place and in the right place. <laughs> A lot of times those stripes are what people know that that's my pet because they've got that specific stripe right here. Um, and your own pet, that's how you know, you know their markings. So what did you do with the grid on that pet portrait, the commission? You were in the middle of a story. Oh, I was just saying like, so that's what I did. I did the grid first and then I moved on to this. So as, well, I left the grid up for a bit and then I worked on his markings. Actually, let me see. I'm gonna share my, let me find, I did find the photo, I was talking about it not that long ago and I found the photo of the finished piece. Let me see if I can find it again. And I'll pull it up. Because this pet, his markings weren't distinct. He had a lot of light fur right up next to a lot of dark fur and it, they weren't distinct markings. Oh, here it is. I'll share my screen here. So you can see him here. Can you guys see him? Yeah. Okay. So I ended up doing a lot of blurring things out. You can see I kind of drug the background in and on either side of him and even into his ears a little bit. Um, his head was tilted. He had these kind of mauvey browns with black and tan and white and gray. And there were so many things happening. Um, every time I was going into these little details of fur from a really crappy phone picture, I, oh. it just didn't look right. Um, so, I needed to make sure I got his eyes because we all know if you don't get the eyes right on pets or people, it's not right. So I worried about getting all of these details around the eyes and all of this around his snout and into his jaw because then there was a shadow line of fur at the bottom of his jaw. So I used the grid to set all of this information right in the middle of his face because that was the most important thing. Um, and he was laying down. So then there was this weird pillow that was the same color as him. Oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> it was just an all Fine. around um, mm. challenge. Let me see if this, oh, I was gonna say the one photo had my easel. I don't have the photo references anymore. Um, so, I really was just having a hard time making sure, and I didn't know the pet. That's again, one of those challenges. If you know the pet, you can take your own photos and you know their personality a little bit. Um, this one, you know, like what I'm doing right now, it's probably more to show you the technique, but for, the dog that I just showed you, it was super important to get all of this information set in place. Um, with the way Oreo is, he's got a lot of open space on his fur and it's not totally necessary to do this, but I wanted to show you so you can apply it to your next one when it's necessary. Um, hold on. So now I've got a nice, um, here we go. Just a, it's cheap, but a little, a nice fine round paintbrush. Um, I'm going to be stingy with the rubbing alcohol. We don't need a lot. I don't want drips today. <laughs> I saw somebody do this they're very hyper realist painters and they 
do this line drawing in graphite and then they set it with rubbing alcohol. Which is what I'm doing now. Um, when I did it with the, the dog, I had it laying flat. So if it um, starts to run too much, I'll lay it flat. It's very gingerly. Oh, it does behave a little bit differently when it's upright versus laying flat, I do have to say. It like pushes the graphite down, which is kind of funny feeling. So I'm just kind of dabbing at it. I'm not really brushing it, just kind of setting it. And then sometimes, you know, depending on the color of the fur, this could even be, you know, part of the painting. It doesn't even have to be completely covered up if it works for you. But as I said, really important, really helpful when you have stripings, when you have distinctive markings that have to be in the right place, that have to be just so, otherwise it's not dear old fluffy or whatever. It kind of gives you a little texture too, like that's kind of neat looking the way it's sitting. And just like in any other under paintings or drawings, um, directional, markings matter. So whether it's with the pencil and or the paintbrush to get everything kind of set, the direction that you go makes a difference. So if you guys want to go ahead and get started if you haven't already. I'll give you a few minutes here and um, I'll pause the recording so, so you guys can get settled with uh, getting set up. Actually looks kind of neat the way it is. <laughs> mm -hmm. But in two, now I don't feel like it looks as goofy. You know, with just the lines in there and even with the shadow lines, it looked a little goofy, but now it's starting to look a little more like what I need it to. Looks a little bit like fur. And just like with rubbing alcohol in pastel, it um, only takes a second to dry. I need to get this little bit here. Spread that around a little bit. Set the directions. Okay. Shadow looks a little wonky around his mouth because of the way the graphite moved. 
Okay. All right. I'm going to let that dry. I'm going to pause the recording for a minute. All right. So, uh, Renee, this is Joe. Yeah. I just sent you a copy of mine with too much graphite. <laughs> okay. Let me see if it came through. I'll give it a minute. It hasn't shown up just yet. Okay. Um, I'm going to start to block in a little bit. Sometimes I start directly with the eyes. Sometimes I start with some blocking in. I'm going to go ahead and get some of that darkness. I don't want to go too crazy. I don't want to get too close to edges just yet. I want to get some in there. Renee, are you actually using black or is that your eggplant? It's eggplant. Hey, thanks. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to take, so I have a nice light kind of icy blue. I'm gonna start in some of these outer bits. I'm not touching edges just yet. I'm gonna stay away from edges for a minute. Oh, I see some nice lavender in there too. Mm. So I'm just keeping a light touch because I know I'm gonna be layering quite a bit. Um, let's start to get some of that info in there. Again, being aware of directional markings. Super light. This has some kind of mauve properties. It's um, a pastel from my the the light, the Terry Ludwig lights. It's about the same value as the blue. It has a little gray mauve property to it. It's a little bit useful, not, not all over useful. You can think about that. I do have some kind of gray. I'll do that. All right, so this is a nice blue gray that I use in the oceans a lot for the kind of turned up water. So next week, we'll definitely do a dog. Since we've done a cat this week, we'll switch to a dog next week. Um, I'm not sure what dog just yet. <laughs> if I have a picture of Kaiser, maybe we'll do Kaiser. Or if anybody has one they want us to do together as a group, I'm more than happy to do that. See, now he's looking wonky again as I lay in some of this coloring. Put my 
looks different. So I'm looking at some of my neutrals to try and get the, the colors that I want. I don't want to go too black and white, even though he's a black and white cat, because I don't want it to be too dull. Sometimes that's what happens if we stick to actual black and white, unless you're doing a nice pencil drawing that's different, but. Now I am pulling in my little tiny piece of new pastel black just to get some information. Some nice lavenders around the nose with a little bits of pink. So this color is um, like a purple, but like a gray purple, nice. Nice way to get a little bit of extra depth in there. Okay, I'm going to work on his eyeliner for a minute. <laughs> And just like with people portraits, this is one of those, it's tedious, it takes a little extra effort. You have to go a little slow because when you have to erase and come back to it, it gets a little, you know, you get a little testy. I get a little testy because, you know, I don't feel like going back to erase it all. Some of that green going in his eyes. Now, Renee, will you do an alcohol wash on him? No, not from now. No, you can. No, I mean, that's, that's okay. certainly, you know, at this stage, you could certainly set it with alcohol too. Uh, okay, but that just, wasn't my plan for today. <laughs> I was just curious because it looked like you were setting it up for that. Mm. Yeah, I'm just, uh, I'm going real light because I'm just building slowly. Um, there's only a couple of spots on his fur that I'm 100% sure of how the colors are going to go and what they're going to be. But the, the rest, it's a little tricky with all these shadows in here. It's, it's not quite an obvious what color you pick up kind of a thing. Once again, the eyes are looking a little wonky because I just put in, I just laid in color. So everything looks a little coloring book-ish right now, <laughs> which is fine. It just, 
That's where we're at. Not a big deal. Just gentle layers. This is a nice little mauve pink for the inside of his ears. I'm getting that dark in first and then I can put some of the lighter pink on top of it. And we start to get that little glow. Although that's a little too heavy in the pink family. Um, I probably will at some point get out some uh, pipe insulation and do a little blending slash moving, if you will. Just kind of, you know, getting things settled in its spot sort of a thing. So if you need, if you don't have any pipe insulation out, you might want to get some. Is the pipe insulation more or less like the pool noodles? Yeah. Because yeah. that I have. <laughs> well, you can use pool noodles. Um, cool. Yeah. Pipe insulation is actually a lot cheaper because <laughs> it's well, not I, colorful. I, got, I had this idea that I got on Pinterest, but uh, anyway, I have pieces left over. I only paid a dollar at the dollar store. Oh, good. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's cheaper then. Um, yeah. yeah. So just use the outside of it. And like I said, don't savor them. They will, those pieces will be used really fast. Yeah. All right. I got to pop into my closet over here and get some more out. Did it rise? What, dark green? Or, or green. Um, and I, this is too small paper. Did really do well. All right, well, stepping away from the easel and going across the room is actually, I feel better about it now. <laughs> So if you haven't stepped away from your easel, step away and take a look from a distance. So I think, well, maybe I'm gonna put a little bit more down. Hold on. Oh, that's gonna be a good color. All right. So just like with anything else, when we're working in pastel, I want to get a little bit of darker color down underneath so that when I put those bright highlights on, it has some place to sit. So the trick with white fur, you don't want to go too dark too soon. Um, but you don't want to be too light either. You want there to be some kind of contrast. She could do it's not really dark. So I picked a different blue that's a little cooler than what I started with. I just want to get some information in. I started playing with some other colors in the shadow that I like. But I don't want to do that just yet because I know I want to set some things in place over here. Get some things going. All right, 
So I have a nice thin layer of color. I'm going to go ahead and um, set that. This particular batch of uh, the last batch of eggplants that I got was not their normal consistency. I have been fighting with it. So when I use the pipe insulation, it almost goes away. Again, I'm just, I'm not, rubbing, I'm not blending colors, I'm just kind of setting it into the paper. So um, in the direction that the fur is going, uh, just giving it a little set in place, nothing crazy. All right. I'm going to pause the recording for just a minute and um, yeah, he's coming along. I'm going to pause the recording. Um, I think I'm going to look at the eyes for a little bit. There's lots of cool colors in the eyes. You know, there's the blues and the greens and all sorts of things happening all at once. So what color you're using. I feel like I have the right light one. That's what, that's colors right. in the yeah. eyes mm -hmm. and the right shapes in the eyes. So I want to kind of get this detail work settled before I start fussing with the fur that's all around. Um, just to keep myself. I had the worst time when we did this class with her before the one day session. I still have that cat somewhere. It's off. <laughs> fighting the shape here, trying to find a good corner on my <laughs> little new pastel. All right. Look at the pastel she's using for the eyes, how fat it is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I use the big sticks as much as I can. Wow, how big's your paper? Nine by 12. Wow. I think that's part of what fools people too. You know, um, when they, your instinct when you're working on detail is to grab a pastel pencil. Right, you know, and sometimes it's just the pastel pencil isn't going to give you the sharpness that you're looking for because it just can't because it's too hard. Um, and un unless it's perfectly clean tooth, 
that you had set aside for it. So, but if you just kind of focus on finding little sharp edges of the fat pieces, you can get them, you can get a better marking. I did have somebody ask me, well, how do I keep my edges sharp? I don't, <laughs> it just happens to turn out at some point you can rotate your uh, stick around enough until you find a, until you find a good clean spot. I'm kind of moving his pupil around a little bit. Kaiser, stop. He's chewing on himself. <laughs> Drives me nuts. <laughs> Yesterday, I took him to um, the Veterans Park in Estelle Manor. He was so good. He didn't even, there was a family of five deer, a mama and a papa and three little babies. He just looked at him. He didn't bark, nothing. We just went along. Like, why can't we do that with all kinds of other dogs? And then we saw other dogs and that was fun. <laughs> he did what was expected then. But I was surprised that he didn't care about the deer. Okay, so now if I'm looking at this eye, there's like some of that kind of mauvey pink right under it. I feel like I'm going to have to break down and get out the reading glasses. I'm not in the mood, guys. It's happening. <laughs> Whether I want it to or Hardly not. Hardly no sympathy here. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I'm like, oh, you know, I'm like, how am I going to do this? I used to be able to like get right up next to the painting and just see into the, you know. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> That is a little bit of a deep spot there. So little bits of pink that are kind of all around his mouth too. I'm not gonna, um, it's gonna look a little wonky at first because I'm gonna put a little bit of extra down so that I can get the light on top. Get some more of that lavender in there. That's a nice lavender. Have to sharpen up some of that. So I hate, you know, when we have to, it almost looks like you need to draw a straight line. Um, Try not to, just try to dab things in there because it'll help things look a little bit more natural as you go. I have to tell you, Renee, I thought 
at pets were going to be easier than people, but it's not true. <laughs> They're hard. hard. It's not true. It's true. I yeah. It's, um... Yeah. Pets are, um, that's when, you know, it gets a little frustrating when people question how much you want to, you know, even with the portraits, if you, if they want to commission the portrait, Kaiser, oh, no, it's you, enough. You know, it, you deserve it's, every penny that you get. <laughs> yeah, that's why you know when I see fellow artists don't charge that much for their portraits. You know, I guess you know. I, I mean, you have to set your own prices. I can't judge, but on anybody else's right. prices. But I hope that it's worth the amount of work that goes into it. But you know what, too, at the same time, I mean, the more you do it, the faster you get, the more you, you know, the more you're accustomed to what you're doing and that's the experience so, of it. So maybe, you know, you're faster at it and you can do right, it less think, because you're more proficient. Right. I spoke to a, uh, a guy I went to school with. He's, um, what he's very good at portraits he's um that was his profession actually was art and uh, he said you have to know anatomy mm -hmm. for doing portraits and I, I never it's like oh yeah he said yeah. you know you have to know where the ears are and when the you know how the top of the ears and all that stuff but I guess yeah. you have to know animal anatomy too that definitely helps you know I mean I I know uh the one atelier in Philly that I went to, they, if you go to their full four-year program, you do all those, you do those anatomy drawings, you do those right. muscular, the musculatures, everything that's underneath the skin. And, you know, you think it might be a waste of time, but it's really I thought so in high you. school. <laughs> yeah. In yes. high school, I could never have been bothered to do that. <laughs> yeah. And I found the most difficult one that I've done uh, uh -huh. was a short-haired dog. The short hair was much more difficult. Well, there's less room for for error. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. 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 You can. The slightest mistake is going to be obvious versus uh yeah i keep picking the same blue <laughs> it's always how it goes you think you're doing something different and it's like the exact same pastel that's too bad gotta find a good turquoise to put in here too Let's see. So I had pulled some turquoise, but they're a little too dark. So there's these lovely little highlights that has some turquoise in them. That's pretty good. So for those of you who took the portrait class, or if you just follow me online, um, I had posted all four pieces together. I posted the, the charcoal drawings and the paintings together. Um, after we finished our class. And so, as you guys know, it was my grandfather that I, that I used for the first one. And I, in the post, I mentioned that the, the girl model was from a workshop that I took with Alan Picard and then I recommended the workshop. And then the second one being my grandfather. Well, my aunt did not read the full post and she thought I was saying that the man 
was Alan Picard. <laughs> and she sends me a text message and she's like, who is that man? It looks a lot like daddy. I was like, well, I hope it does. It is him. <laughs> I'm like, come on now. I'm like, did you read it? She's like, oh. <laughs> I figured she wouldn't like the painting anyway because I, I was very loose in my uh, style of painting. So there was a lot of color in it. And, you know, because the picture was so old. And a, not quite the best photo reference, but it worked. So these are, this is one of those paintings where you think you've gotten pretty far and then you realize you haven't. <laughs> There's a ton of work left to do. That's kind of where I'm at right now. I haven't even really addressed the uh, connection between the black and the white. I guess I have to start working on. Give myself a break from the tedious tight spots of the face. So I'm gonna kinda do that. So as you can, you can kind of see, even on the camera, you can kind of see how I'm, I'm going with the direction that the fur's going. Um, you can still see a little bit of the paper through it, which I'm leaving there so I can have that little bit of the darker blues uh, before I put it. I haven't put in my lightest lights yet. I mean, there's still, there are a light blue and a light turquoise, but it's not quite the brightest just yet. So there's still room to go with that. Um, still kind of just staring at this, the, the shadow section. I haven't quite got through the shadow section just yet, but I got to add a little bit more before I move on, before I work on some other stuff. This isn't bad. There's a lot of um, nuances when you get into this part of it, you know, with the different shadow shapes, there's so much happening, little dark pockets, little light pockets. Um, I think I can continue to go a little bit darker in spots that's what I have to decide as I go. So that's why I like to work around. I don't want to work on one spot and completely finish it. Um, like I know there's some tweaking on the eye to do the curvature kind of changed a little bit. So I need to make it look like it's, you know, I can see how the eyeball actually comes out a little bit like that marble shape coming out. So I want to get that fullness back in there right now. Um, as I worked with the black a little bit, I kind of tightened it up. So I can see that. I know I have to address that. Kind of push some of that green back down. But slow and steady. Slow and steady. I'm going to take some of this black. With the eggplant. Just a little bit. And it is funny, like, you know, when you see the black next to the eggplant, you can see the, the difference in 
how dull the black looks in comparison. But I have to be a little careful again because as I, you know, as you spread those pieces of white fur into the black, there's a whole purple issue that can happen, right? And there's, oh, there's pieces of light fur. Up there. A little bit at a time. So solidified that a little bit. Um, at some point, I will address the background. I'm not going to leave it blank, I don't think. Um, I'm not sure. It's a big question that. for me. Because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> normally I just leave, because with the Canson, uh, yeah. it, it, you have colored sheets. So you don't have to worry, but kind of coordinate the colors. But yeah. with the UART, it's going to be something different for me that you've right. already so taught in class. Yeah. You can, you can stain the UART a whole color. So let's say you know you want to work on pink, uh, whatever. You can take a pink pastel, preferably hard, and then take the rubbing alcohol and scrub it in and stain the whole paper. Um, oh. It's a little more, if you try to do it afterwards, you have to be super, super careful. It's not that it can't be done, but you just need to be super careful if you try to do it after the fact, uh -huh. um, just because of you don't want things to run into the finished animal um but it's all you can make it be whatever you need it to be or want it to be hmm. and so i do at some point sooner rather than later need to decide what I'm doing with the background because we have all those little bits of fur that come out. So if I start to put those little fine markings where the fur comes out into the background, I need to have a background on there so the fur can sit on top. Mm. We'll start to place some of the highlights. Then I can change my pressure and just have little bits of this light come on top. Instead of being, you know, in the middle here, I pushed a little harder because it's really bright. As it fans out, it can just work with what's already there. So you can see how hard it is in the middle. And then I just kind of fanned it out and it didn't take away that depth, but it worked with it.
I swore I had another lavender out that was lighter. Where did it go? I kind of like the lavender a little bit too, in addition in these, some of these shadows. All right. All right, I think I am gonna have to make a decision about the background now, because I'm getting close to making some of those markings. I can still work on other things. I mean, again, I still have to adjust the eyes. I have to adjust, um, you know, working on the fur connection here between the black and the white. Um, but I think I'm going to go ahead and decide on a background so that I can get those markings as I work around everything. Um, that's weird. So let me think about this. So black and white, I have lots of purple and things in here. I know her favorite color is purple, so I could probably go with some purples hanging out in there hold on a second can see how well he stands out already from the paper yeah i mean right now it's not a bad it's not a bad um look i guess it is right um but because i put grid lines in you can still kind of see them faintly so just kind of put some purple in there. So I'm going to have some, to think about that. So I like to do, when I'm doing a background, um, I like to do a nice variety of, I don't want just a solid color. So I'll just start with some shifts in value. I almost, for some reason, I started to do this thing where it's just um, one directional markings, just like a nice up and down. I'll just work with one color for just a minute. I like that color that pops a little bit mm. we'll start with that and then i'll work my way into ugh, there's a crease in that paper i'll work my way into the other colors that'll go with them so you know the timing of the background color or information um I guess it's all a matter of preference. So I'm worried about the edges. I'm worried about the fur that's coming out. So I have to kind of do it now. Uh, I don't want to wait too much longer. Um, if it was a human portrait, you have a little more time, right? Because they're more of a solid edge unless their hair is flying in the wind. Um, And a lot of times, like I showed you earlier today with the other pet portrait, I'll bring some of the background color into the animal um, or into the person, just to give it a little bit of connection, um, a little bit of fun, not so stiff. I don't really like stiff portraits. So purples can get a little cold. I don't want that. 
Um, I am going to take a little bit of a sweep before I start to add too much more color, just because um, you see how like the little bits, because I was just lightly dragging, and you see little bits of the tooth. And if I keep dragging, that's all it picks up. It picks up where you've already marked, and then the tooth is still there. Um, so I don't want to fight that. So I'm just going to kind of set some things in place. And then I can worry about some nice casual markings. A little bit close. I'm still keeping with that up and down. That's just what I want. I mean, you can, you don't have to go any particular direction. You can have a nice solid color. Um, it could be, so let's say, so right now the color, you know, Oreo standing in a room that has hardwood floors. So it's a nice orangey brown. You could put an orangey brown in there. Um, or you can just kind of make it up. Not as interesting as the uh, purple. <laughs> I, I know, right? I like the purple. <laughs> now, would you go You go a step lighter where the sun seems to be hitting him over here? Yeah, so I'll put yeah. some varieties of purples as I go um, mm -hmm. and just add a little bit of a hint of a light source, um, but not, you know, full on. I'm going to test some other colors in there, like turquoise. We'll see if that mm. can work. It's a bit of a jump. Maybe put <laughs> some lavender back on top of that. Oh, and I see, I like that. The turquoise underneath of it kind of oh. brightened up a little bit. Yeah. So I'll do a little bit of that in there. There's a, <laughs> you see that little line? Yeah. There was a dent in the paper as I mounted it. <laughs> so oh. now I have to deal with that stupid dent every time I come over it. Oh, there's a second dent. <laughs> it makes my, uh, getting the pattern a little difficult. So this is a Rembrandt. So it's kind of mixing some things together, which is nice and lightening it up all at the same time. Well, blues are always fun too. A little bit of electric blue in here. Pretty nice. So to get into those light purples, it's always just tricky because they just get so white, so dull. 
Keep in mind. I think I'm going to leave the background alone for now. Um, I have enough information that I can get his fur around it. And then if I need to tweak a little bit, I can. I don't, you know, I do like that little spot of blue in there. So it's just something there that he's up against. We have about 45 minutes left. I'm gonna clear my eyes for two seconds and just step away and then I'll come back in and start working on the connections between the dark and the light, start tweaking his eye again. Um, we still have whiskers to put in, lots of things to do. Okay, just kind of taking a look around. This dark spot comes all the way up. Get a little closer. I think what I would like to do is take the light into the dark. That's what I'm gonna focus on. So I need to look at the overall shape of the dark spots to make sure I have enough and so here the next thing I'm going to do is I've got this right here so if you look at his um, the ear on the left there's this little bright white underneath and then the dark kind of goes out wisps out on top of it so to do that I'm going to get some more light in there make sure there's enough light in the right location see how it's kind of shaped up behind it And then I can just take my dark and just kind of wisp it out. I just want to very gently drag it out into the background in the direction that it's going. Very gently can pull just up ever so slightly. Trying not to completely change the, the shape of the ear. It's a little difficult to see there. Okay. So now the same kind of thing is going to happen going into the light into the dark. Nice, clean pastel. I'm going to start with a simple wisp up into it. The same kind of thing I just did here, but I'm going into the dark. So I'm going to just gently set it down so I don't really make a mark. I'm just placing it at the starting point and just lift up and then clean off 
and lift up into it. It's already giving me a little bit of purple, which is fine. It still drugs some purple. So now that I have those started, it's not perfect, right? Some of it is a little stronger. So this is again, a very tedious gentle bit here. So looking for some larger clumps that I can solidify. And then I can think about all the, the varieties of ways that I can pull some of those singular strands of light in there. We talked about the edge of the pastel and just making your little lines. But again, that's going to depend on the softness of your pastel, uh, how much tooth you have left, all that kind of stuff. Um, sometimes it's not a soft enough look. It gets a little, a little bit too much. So you can just tap them in once you get them. It softens it up just a touch. Again, make sure you got to pay attention to how clean your fingers are. So this is one of those darker mid purples that I had. So just to give, which you really can't see on camera at all, kind of like last week where I had to keep sending you pictures. Um, you really can't see a lot of it. The difference, um, but it's just a nice subtle, bit of information to show you the direction of the fur. Yeah, you can't see that at all. So when I send you guys the photograph, you can take note of some of that going in the right direction there. Actually that fur comes all the way down. Darkness. So I'm getting, this is that mid, again, I'm still have the same piece of pastel in my hand. This is that mid range, deep gray purple. I'm coming up closer to the edge of the transitional spot. And then that's all pretty bright in there. So I'm gonna take my bright, white. And again, that gentle wisp, setting it down, pulling it in to the dark. That wasn't very big. There we go. Um, I should probably actually get out a piece of paper towel for this because it's not cleaning off on my hand very well. It's still kind of dragging some purple. Some of these are a little longer. And some of them are pretty blue. So don't forget your, your shadow colors, your blues and your turquoises and your shadows. These little pieces in here are a little bit um, longer in the body of his fur. So some of these lines are a little dramatic for right now, which is fine because I'm gonna tone them down. But I just wanna get them up in there. Not 
too bad, not too bad. Let me see here. I'm gonna try and lighten some stuff up a little bit. So I've gone so light in my touch, some of the, <laughs> some of the grid lines are still kind of hanging out. Not the color of the grid lines, but the dent of the grid lines, which I didn't think I pushed that hard, but I guess I do. So I'm going for an even brighter feel here. Yeah, I might have purple on that one. So I'm building, I have these really nice neutral um, light blue and light turquoise. And I can kind of work back and forth to give a little glow, kind of like the sky. You know, I always put turquoise and blue together in the sky, it's similar to that. Um, certain spots I have to be careful because I'm piling up a little bit. I've got a little extra stash of pastel that's kind of leave an extra behind. It's a little dull. I don't like that one. It's a little brighter, but that's okay. It is funny because you know you're always I'm always a little hesitant to go too dark when it's white. You have to really take your time to think about the value shift. Does it need to be nearly as dark as what we might think it does? I'm adding an extra bit of darkness here. I know it's not this dark. I'm adding extra bits of dark so I can bring the light on top of it. These little shifts and transitions um, between the jaw and into uh, the whole side of his face there. It's such a subtle change sometimes. Oh, it's already 11 o'clock. I'm gonna keep going. I don't know if I'll get all the way to the end. I meaning finish by the end step away for a second. That's right. Did all that addition. I will certainly finish it and send a photo to you guys one way or the other, whether it's in class or not. Let me keep pushing here. Is that little shadow under his eye? That's a good color. Okay. 
It gets a little tricky when you have to have a whole stick into such a tight space and changing your directions and making sure that you're not overrunning something else in there. I'm lightening up this eye a little bit more than the photograph shows. That's too light, but I don't want to um, completely bury it in the dark because that could have just been what the photograph was doing. So this is that black new pastel that I'm just using to kind of blend it in. So now I have to look at the shape of this eye again, get it a little more accurate. Push it down. I'll have to add some more black back underneath of it. Oh, hush, guys. This made his nose a little wonky. So these little tiny, this is just like a human portrait. These tiny little bits and pieces can drive you insane. Um, I'm gonna get out my couple of pencils here for a second. I have no more space to set things down. <laughs> Gonna need a bigger studio. My black pastel pencil is the most crumbly. Piece of crap that I can't seem to get sharpened anymore. All right, so I'm going to use a 6B pencil. So the 6B pencil is dark enough on its own and it's helping me move some things around because there's so much pastel down. It's helping me move some things without having to add more. Now this one eye, I realize has this little bit of straight across the top, which also is affecting the way it's looking.
So again, this is just a regular pencil. It's my 6B. Now I'm going to switch to a pastel pencil. It's one of the darker purples that I used for shadowing on a human. Again, same kind of thing. It's hard enough that it just kind of moves some things around a little bit. So for me, I... You got it. That's that, that, that I had more of a sinister look to it. <laughs> no, yeah. Perfect. Yeah. It's like, uh, and then when the other eye doesn't have, um, a highlight on it, it's kind of awkward. I think sometimes, um, but I don't like, I like to keep the, the pupils a little softer, um, and not so specific, like a, not as sharp of an edge because it, um, kind of, well, I mean, I guess it depends on your style of painting. For me, it's, I want to keep things a little more loose feeling. If I, um, if I have it too tight in the pupil, it'll be a little awkward looking. So in person, this eye, the second eye over here, isn't nearly as dark and overbearing as it looks on camera. So that's something you'll have to look for again when you get the photo. Soften up some of these marks. has a nice little green in it. And just some directional markings, bring some of them out. And then there's this lovely little haze of bright coming off the side. Although that looks a little dark on camera. Eh, it's pretty dark. Okay, so I'm gonna take some blue. And flick that out into the background. So all these edges I've been avoiding, <laughs> I have to do something with now. See, I got a little pile. You can see this little line that's a little pile of pastel that's happening. So I have to be careful as I'm making those little piles. So pull this up into It's a little bit of pink that comes out. It needs to be softer in there. I have that a little too bright. Soften that. Okay, with a better edge.
lean off the edge constantly. Nope, too light. Let me see. I feel like that could go a bigger swatch of light in here. So I'm gonna add. And then drag down. So with regular, with people portraits, with pet portraits, with even with landscape painting, um, practicing your pressure is huge. I mean, that's what makes so many paintings in pastel work or not work. Um, when the mark is too harsh, it doesn't work. When it's too soft, it doesn't work. Um, you know, sometimes it requires a harsh mark. Sometimes it requires a light and airy mark. And sometimes it just needs a little pat on the back, literally, and just take my finger <laughs> and pat it down. Let me get rid of that pile. All right, so this is another nice little neutral mauve gray that I started with in the beginning. I'm kind of pulling that one back out to get these, the lighter sections within the shadow, right? We had a lot of shadow in here, and then the shadow has its own nuances to it. All this blue up here. It's more of a periwinkle than a blue. So this is the point too, where you can take some of those background colors and kind of play with the idea of them coming into the animal. So I do it down in the corner. So if I don't like it, I can just take it away. It's not doing much. Didn't really do a lot in there, but it didn't ruin anything either. So that's good. All right. Let's see, we have 15 minutes left. I'm gonna look and see what's left to do. Let me stand back for a minute. Um, and I can make some decisions here, some creative decisions. Hey, I still don't have the whiskers. I know I still need to do the whiskers, um, but you know, we can get a little obsessive with seeing little bits of shadow and light and shadow and light and shadow and light, and it just gets a little bit much. So I can make some decisions about, you know, what I can leave out at this point or what I need to fix at this point. Um, it doesn't all have to be exactly, you know, you can see, okay, well, there's a little shadow here and there's a shadow here. 
but overall if you step back is it the cat is it is it oreo or is it something weird you know like i gotta fix his nostril that got really wonky for some reason um certain you know when the when the drawing needs to be fixed fix it you know but don't get too obsessed if you don't have to right i'm back to using my pencil again my regular pencil which I kind of like anyway for some of the, um, the whiskers, just to give that hint of the whisker line um, where the whiskers come out, the little shadow. Just kind of like that a little bit. Although I just keep seeing on camera, there's a line that goes straight, like he's got a mustache. So <laughs> I gotta get rid of that. I gotta break it up. I keep thinking I break it up and then it's still there. His nostril is still off. I feel myself getting tired, so I have to. Sometimes you can fight through the tired and sometimes you can't. <laughs> I think this might be a time where I have to just chill for a minute. For instance, I think his mouth line comes out too far. Maybe just a skosh, not a lot. Just a skosh. Change it just a touch. And you know, the whiskers do make a big difference once they're in. Um, they make a pretty big difference in general. break up some of this darkness eh. and don't forget you still have your I haven't used my paintbrush at all today you still have your trusty paintbrush to knock some things away if you need it that helps me there so my dark doesn't have to be so dark not everywhere at least It was start. This is a hard pastel. This is um a new pastel. So I was. It ends up blending things. And especially with the fur, like we did last time, the loose paintbrush can help create that texture that we're looking for. So let me do a little test about for a whisker for our last couple of minutes here. I've got a Rembrandt. There's a whisker that kind of comes up. The top. Eh, the line's a little fatter than I like, but that's all right. And he's got a couple that are coming down. Eh, that's probably a little long. That's the thing with whiskers. I'm not. <laughs> You have to be like super confident from the get go. And when you can't see them completely, it can be a little challenging. But the ones on this side have a little bit of that, uh, it has the contrast of the shadow behind it. All right. I'm going to stop myself for today because I'm tired now. I know I have to tweak the, the nose. The nose isn't quite right. It's just the shape of the nostrils. It's not going to be much 
I mean, I'm not going to have to like erase the whole thing and start over kind of a thing. Um, but I am going to have to adjust the, the, the shape of it. So I'm going to be using my good old skewer and doing some remeasuring of things. Um, I'm going to recheck the eyes because again, the eyes make a big difference. Looking on screen where I see the two next to one another, overall, I'm pretty happy. Um, but there's still some color adjustments I'd like to make, value adjustments I'd like to make. Um, I love this little section here. I mean, that's the favorite part of it. That's <laughs> the, the light to the dark going into one another. I'm really happy with that. Um, I have to look at his ears a little bit better where the background meets. And there's just some soft work to do in inside his ear. There's, you know, little bits of fur that you can kind of see. And I can just take that Rembrandt and just kind of help it along a little bit. There. How did everybody do today? Do you have any other questions? Let me see if any emails came through. I'm going to stop the recording.